Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about curcumin. But before I get started, I've been making a lot of videos on specific nutrients over the last several weeks. However, I just want to preface that. If you want to get healthy, you have to do some of the lifestyle changes that are necessary for you to get better. So one, you need to get proper sleep. Two, you need to reduce stress. Three, you have to exercise. And four, you have to take in the right foods, right? An anti-inflammatory, nutrient-dense uh, diet would be very beneficial. After you implement all that, then you have to say, do I still need supplementation? And that's where these nutrients will come in and help you get to the next level of your care. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands that it's not just about taking one supplement or one magic nutrient to get better. You have to do your lifestyle changes first, or you have to build a foundation of lifestyle changes in order for these nutrients to take effect. Okay. So let's get right into curcumin. So what is it? It's a plant chemical found in turmeric. So turmeric is different from curcumin. Curcumin is found within the turmeric um, uh, spice, but it's not the same thing, right? So turmeric is used in curries, teas, food coloring, sometimes preservatives. Um, curcumin makes up only about one to 3% of turmeric. So if you took a thousand milligrams of turmeric, only one to three percent of that is actually curcumin, which is the active form that really gives you the benefits. So you would have to take in a lot of turmeric in order to get the uh, medicinal benefits of taking curcumin. So what is it good for? It's an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. So because of these two factors, it helps things like polycystic ovary syndrome, endometriosis, neuroinflammation, really good for brain inflammation, post-concussion, uh, Alzheimer's, and so forth. It's also good for joint inflammation or generalized inflammation because it also impacts autoimmune disease. Inflammatory bowel conditions, IBD, or Crohn's, or ulcerative colitis, it can be beneficial. However, you do have to be careful if you have an active uh, process going on, some people cannot tolerate it at that time. So it, it's anti-inflammatory because it affects NF-kappa B and TH17. And I have a video on some of these cytokines and so forth, so you can go ahead and watch that. Also, it has a cardiometabolic effect. It has a profound effect on physiology in terms of uh, improving body mass index. Now I know body mass index is not the most accurate thing because if you're a little bit shorter and a little bit thicker in muscle, your BMI is up. We're talking about people who have some uh, adipose tissue or you know basically they're overweight. So it'll improve BMI, weight, it'll improve leptin which is the signaling uh, from fat tissue, it improves insulin control or insulin resistance. It will increase adiponectins, right? Which will help insulin resistance, diabetes, as well as atherosclerosis. So it has a profound cardiovascular effect as well as um, basically uh, insulin resistance and fat management. So it's a great nutrient for that. It also activates AMPK. So AMPK is basically the, kind of like the uh, master metabolic homeostasis signaler. So it helps um, manage your metabolic processes uh, much better. So it has a lot of effects. So curcumin, in terms of bioavailability, is very poor, right? It doesn't absorb very readily. You have to use other things to help it. So naturally, if you want to take, let's say, a lot of turmeric and you want to try to get the benefits of curcumin, you can use pepper and you can use a fatty uh, source like avocados or oils and so forth to help increase uh, the absorption. However, there's a lot of different companies out there now. What they're doing is they're using uh, micronization of, um, uh, of the product as well as uh, using pepper extracts 
uh, to increase the bioavailability. So there's a product called Long Vita, increases it by 100%. Mervi Mervia is 27%, uh, 29%, I'm sorry. Theracumin will increase it by 27%. Curcumin um, bio, uh, bioperine, 21%. BCM95, seven times. And then there's another one called C3 complex, and they use a combination of curcuminoids, uh, which will help improve absorption. So there's a lot of different types uh, of companies out there. Uh, and these are all kind of like trademarked or registered, uh, but they're found in a lot of these products that actually sell uh, curcumin uh, rich nutrient um, supplementation, right? In terms of adverse effects, diarrhea, headaches, nausea, rash, uh, yellow stool because of the color. Um, and what they found is actually it's not dose dependent. What that means is that whether you take 100 milligrams up to 1,000 milligrams, it really wasn't dose dependent. It's some people just react to it that way. Dosages and studies, most of the dosages they use will be between 500 to 2,000 milligrams per day, uh, usually with a fatty meal is recommended. Again, you can use pepper or pepperine, um, uh, which will help also increase the bioavailability, bioavailability and absorption into the GI tract. So it's very important to maintain a certain level of uh, lifestyle before you add these supplements in because you can have a more profound effect if you can get your systems calmed down, right? Dietary, sleep, um, stress reduction, exercise, these are all very important aspects of it. So make sure you do those types of things and then consider adding individual supplementation to help your health conditions, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.